Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is the first video of 2020 and it's also the first video where I am narrating. In today's video I have decided to draw an ermine or a stout. I've just finished watching His Dark Materials for the second time and I am absolutely obsessed with Pan when he is in his little weasel slash pine marten form. It's just so sweet and so cute and his eyes are adorable. So feeling inspired by that, I decided to pop onto Pinterest and just browse around and really get the look and feel for, or really get a feel for what an ermine looks like, the shapes of its body, um, the shapes of its face, the sort of postures it has, the way it moves and um, the sort of backgrounds and environments I would find them in. So after looking at uh, quite a few images I started to draw, um, I really liked the idea of having this ermine in uh, just a little bit of a quaint environment. Um, I like to do these sorts of drawings when I'm learning how to draw an animal and I'll do quite a few of them one after the other um, to just try and really have the animal's shape and look ingrained in my brain so that I could start to draw them from memory or combine elements of what they look like with other animals to create something entirely new. So this is the first stage in that process. I found drawing their faces quite tricky because they, they have these really, really sweet iconic features that are you want to stylize, but sometimes you just lose that cuteness when you stylize them. So it's, um, that was, I think, the most challenging part of it. I found myself having to return to Pinterest and really have some a good look at what their faces looked like from different angles to really get those eyes and that nose down. Um, but by the end of it, I think I was, I was quite happy with, with the way it turned out. What I was expecting to be the most difficult part was drawing the body, but that seemed to come quite easily. I found a really, really sweet photo of an ermine in snow surrounded by these spiny, um, I think they're f a bits of a fern. It was, it was really sweet and I thought the green of the plants would pop really nicely um, with the slightly purple white background. You can't quite see it yet in the video um, just because of the glare of the screen. Once I am happy with the composition, I start to add the color. I set the sketch onto multiply and I start to layer the color on a new layer on top of that or below it. I really, really, really love the pencil brushes that come um, with the sketch pack on Procreate. And I also use a brush by, a pencil brush by Max Packs. I really just love the look and feel of it and you kind of get this traditional feel without having to color traditionally. This year I decided I wanted to film my drawings and paintings rather than rely on Procreate's inbuilt recording feature. That way you can see, it just has more of a personal feel, I think. You can see how many times the artist refers back to reference photos, how many times they go back and forth or take a double take. The Procreate recording feature also doesn't allow, well, doesn't show how many times I have to zoom in and zoom out to really get the full picture when I'm drawing. So I thought this would be a great way to really provide that aspect that I felt I was missing. And now I can also start to add my traditional paintings and drawings onto the channel as well. It's been almost exactly a year since I got my iPad Pro and Procreate. Before that, I would use Photoshop and a Wacom tablet to do all my drawing. But since getting the iPad, I have just loved Procreate so much. I prefer the way the app runs, I adore the brushes, and I really like how streamlined it is. Photoshop is predominantly a photo editing software with drawing capabilities, whereas Procreate is just for drawing. 
so it's not bugged down by all these extra features that I'm never really going to need or use. So I definitely prefer this. I also like how compact the iPad Pro is. You just pick it up and you can go wherever you want to and you can sit however you want to or wherever you want to and you can draw. But as much as I love Procreate and my iPad, I think this year I am going to make a conscious effort to do more traditional painting and traditional illustrating. I'm going to get back to my roots in oil painting and wash painting and hopefully make a few videos on those so you can see me fail a few times before I sort of get back on the wagon with how to paint. I think one of the reasons why I haven't really picked up a physical brush in a few years is after doing digital painting and digital drawing for so long, well, it's been about three years, you kind of, it's daunting having to now go get paint and brushes and palettes and paper and a surface to work on that you have to be able to clean up afterwards and then after you're done you need to clean up the brushes and you got to clean up the palettes and it's a lot of effort to get started it's a lot of effort when you clean up and I think it's a little daunting knowing that you can so easily mess up and potentially not be able to fix it or in my case I would get quite overwhelmed and disheartened and then just brush it aside and move on without really completing it. So 2020 will be the year where I push past that phase and finish a drawing whether or painting rather whether it ends up good or bad it must be finished. And just in terms of time it wasn't really available I was studying graphic design it was a four-year degree and it was a very, very busy degree. We had a new project every week. We were working day in, day out to finish them. And on weekends, if we weren't trying to feverishly catch up what we had missed in the week for the project, I was just too tired to really want to do anything creative. This year, I, it's my second year out of university and I am about seven months into a job as an animator so now my hours are just nine to five and then you go home and you don't think about work you don't have any homework to work on so I get that time to rest and then my weekends are actually open to me being creative so that is when I'm going to be making traditional art and I am quite excited, though scared, at the prospects. I think one of the things I also struggle with, especially when working digitally, is overworking my drawing. I struggle to keep things simple. Um, I think the ability to zoom in on a canvas makes you focus on details in areas where it's not quite necessary. So I am quite happy with the way this drawing is turning out. Um, I made a conscious effort not to get bogged down by details or unnecessary details. Um, I really made an effort to keep the illustration itself simple as well as the backgrounds and just focus on simplicity. So at this point in the video, I have run out of things to speak about. So if there are any topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments below. And in the next videos, I can have a little bit more of a guided approach to the narrative aspect of the video. Right now in the drawing, I'm working on the snowy background, which is a light purple. You can't quite see the tint of the color because of the screen, but you'll be able to see it in the final product at the end of the video. I'm also working on adding in the, f the ferns. I'm fairly certain that's a fern. Just to add a bit of color and a little bit of happiness into the drawing. Um, 
I find green is just an extremely happy color personally and I love adding it into all my drawings. There's just something about plants that's just so lively and happy and just makes you think the world's great. Oh wait, that might be part of a pine tree. I honestly have no idea. So as we reach the end of the video and most of the pine fern leaves are almost done, I would love to hear what your goals for 2020 are. Um, if you have any for art in how you're going to improve, if it's just to fill up a sketchbook or learn how to draw something specific, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope to see you all next week or the week after in my next video.